الحمد لله رب العالمين حمدا كثيرا طيبا مباركا فيه كما يحب ربنا ويرضى وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم أما بعد continuing with 30 themes from 30 verses of the book of Allah Azza wa Jal and today we are going to talk about the great harms the grave consequences of not forbidding what is evil meaning if we see evil being committed in front of our eyes and we remain silent concerning it and we have the ability to forbid it there are significant harms and dangers to this and for this lesson inshallah ta'ala we're going to discuss some verses from Surah Al-Ma'idah Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he said about a group from amongst the children of Israel from those who disbelieved كانوا لا يتناهون عن منكر فعلوه لبئس ما كانوا يفعلون they did not used to forbid one another from evil that they used to commit and vile and wicked is what they used to do can anyone tell me the verse before this verse can anyone tell me the verse before this ayah and in reality you should be aware of it because the workbook is up alhamdulillah so you know the verse that is going to be discussed this evening beforehand Naam, the verse yes what is it the verse that precedes it is the saying of Allah Azza wa Jal لُعِنَ الَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا مِنْ بَنِي إِسْرَائِيلِ عَلَى لِسَانِ دَاوُدَ وَعِيسَ بْنِ مَرْيَمِ ذَلِكَ بِمَا عَصَوْ وَكَانُوا يَعْتَدُونَ Cursed upon the tongue of Dawood, David and Jesus, the son of Mary, are those who disbelieved from the children of Israel. And this was due to their disobedience and their transgression. <coughs> and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he said in the next verse, كَانُوا لَا يَتَنَاهَوْنَ عَمُنْكَرْ فَعَلُوهَ They did not forbid and prohibit one another from evil that they used to do. And how vile and wicked is what they used to do. Subhanallah. Look at the consequences, brothers and sisters, when we see evil taking place before our eyes, we have the ability to forbid it and we remain silent about it. Like, for example, you meet someone, a brother, and they're drinking in front of you alcohol, Budweiser. It's visible, right in front of your face. If you pretend like nothing is wrong, and you have the ability to advise them and address that evil subhanallah the threat is great as we will see from the words of al-imam al-sa'di rahimahullah ta'ala he said Allah azza wa jalla said lu'ina alladhina kafaru min bani israel those who disbelieved from the children of Israel, they are cursed. A, what does it mean to be cursed? He said, Turidu wa ubi'idu an rahmatillah. They were expelled and distanced from the mercy of Allah. They were expelled and they were distanced from the mercy of Allah. And when this happens, subhanallah, destruction. May Allah protect us from that. Allah Azza wa Jalla said, "Ala lisani Dawood wa Isa bin Maryam, 
They were cast upon the tongue of Dawu David and Jesus, the son of Mary. Meaning, بِشَهَادَتِهِمَا وَإِقْرَارِهِمَا بِأَنَّ الْحُجَّةَ قَدْ قَامَتْ عَلَيْهِمْ وَعَانَدُوهَا Upon the tongue of Dawood and Isa, Jesus, the son of Mary, meaning with their testimony, the testimony of Dawood, of David, and the testimony of Jesus. And both of them affirm that the proof was established against these people. But they stubbornly opposed it and rejected it. That is the danger of when the proof reaches you, that you are arrogant and you are stubborn and you reject it. Al Inad wal Mu'anada. Dalika, this, this disbelief and this curse resulted from their disobedience and their transgression. Because, as Sa'di said, Rahimahullah, bi isyanihim lillah, wa dhulmihim li'ibadillah. صار سببا لكفرهم وبعدهم عن رحمة الله فإن للذنوب والظلم عقوبات he said this disbelief and this curse Allah cursing these people because of their disobedience to Allah and them oppressing the servants look at the danger of oppression ظلم because of their disobedience to Allah and their oppression of the servants of Allah. Which was a reason for their disbelief and their remoteness and them being distanced from the mercy of Allah Azza wa Jal. And then As-Sa'di said, وَمِمَّعَصِيهِمْ From their sins that brought about their destruction and resulted in various types of punishments. Allah Azza wa mentioned from the sins that resulted in their destruction and various types of punishment, They did not forbid one another from evil. Abu Zakaria, you want to move? Just indicate? No. They did not forbid one another from evil. A meaning. كانوا يفعلون المنكر ولا ينها بعضهم بعضا. Some of them used to commit sins and others did not used to prohibit them from those sins. فيشترك بذلك المباشر وغيره الذي سكت عن النهي عن المنكر مع قدرته على ذلك. Imam Sa'di rahimahullah he said, so therefore, the one who actually committed the evil and the one who was silent and they did not prohibit it, whilst they were able to do so, they share in sin. The one who actually committed the evil and the one who was silent. What did Ibn al-Qayyim rahimahullah say about the one who is silent about the truth? What did he say? Naam. The one who is silent about the truth, meaning when it is upon an individual to speak the truth, but you don't because of fear, or because of dunya, or some other reason. From the worldly reasons, he says, Shaytan al Akhras is a silent devil. Wal mutakallim bil batil, and the one who speaks with falsehood, Dawood. Shaytan natiq, a speaking devil. And Imam Sa'di said, both these individuals, they share in this. وَذَلِكَ يَدُلُّ عَلَى تَهَاوُنِهِمْ بِأَمْرِ اللَّهِ And this, it shows that they attach little importance. They were negligent about the command of Allah. They didn't give importance to the command of Allah. It was something light for them.
Similarly, they held that وَأَنَّ مَعْصِيَتُهُ خَفِيفَ عَلَيْهِمْ That disobeying Allah is something small and something minor. It's insignificant. Oh, they're only disobeying Allah. It's not a big affair. Oh, it's only the command of Allah. Sa'di, he said, فَلَوْ كَانَ لَدَيْهِمْ تَعْظِيمْ لِرَبِّهِمْ لَغَارُ لِمَحَارِمِهِ وَلَغَضِبُ لِغَضَبِهِ if these individuals, if they had reverence and veneration for Allah, if they respected Allah with awe, then these individuals, when they see people doing things that Allah has forbidden, they would oppose them due to their jealousy. And they would get angry in accordance to the anger of Allah Azza wa Jal. And then he mentions, and it's beautiful here, Ikhwan, he mentions, and just think, we're going to relate some of these, inshallah ta'ala, to what we see in our time, when people don't forbid evil. So, parents in their households, you have the ability to forbid evil with your children. You have the ability to enjoy good and forbid evil. Commanding them to pray, Joining the good, forbidding them from evil, forbidding them from the muharramat. He said, وَإِنَّمَا كَانَ السُّكُوتَ عَنِ الْمُنْكَرِ مَعَ الْقُدْرَةِ مُوجِبًا لِلْعُقُوبَةِ لِمَا فِيهِ مِنَ الْمَفَاسِدِ Remaining silent about evil while having the ability to forbid it results in the punishment, meaning a punishment from Allah, due to the great harms connected to this. Meaning, remaining silent about evil, and you have the ability to change it, it results in great harms, many harms. And he mentions some of them. Some of the harms, when we see evil, that we remain silent. And this is whether we see it in person, or we see it on Instagram, or we see it on TikTok. So, if this is the danger of not forbidding evil, what about congratulating people for evil? When we see people disobeying Allah, dancing in a nightclub, and then you come in, billah, on Instagram or Facebook, I'm happy for you. Someone drinking khamar, alcohol, getting high, and you like it, what about that? If this is about not forbidding it, what about liking it and publicizing to the world that you like it? What do you think is the case about that individual? Al Amru Akhtar, that's even more dangerous. Liking something that is clearly forbidden. Al Imam Sa'di rahimahullah he said, Minha, from the dangers. أن مجرد السكوت فعل معصية. He said, remaining silent, being silent, not forbidding evil, in itself is an act of disobedience. You've committed a sin. If you see evil and you remain silent and you're able to change it, that act in itself is a sin. He said, وَإِن لَمْ يُبَاشِرْهَا أَسَّاكِتْ Even if the one who is silent doesn't actually commit the sin themselves. And he mentioned why he said, فَإِنَّهُ كَمَا يَجِبُ إِجْتِنَابَ الْمَعْصِيَةِ فَإِنَّهُ يَجِبُ الْإِنْكَارَ عَلَى مَنْ فَعَلَ الْمَعْصِيَةِ He said, just like it is obligatory to stay away from sin, it is also obligatory to forbid sin. To forbid the one who is committing it from this sin. Yes, it's obligatory that a person stays away from sins. But it's also obligatory that if you see someone committing the sin, that you forbid it if you are able to do so. The Prophet وسلم, he said that. مَنْ رَأَ مِنْكُمْ مُنْكَرًا فَلْيُغَيِّرُهُ بِيَدِهِ فَإِنْ لَمْ يَسْتَطِعْ فَبِلِسَانِهِ وَإِنْ لَمْ يَسْتَطِعْ فَبِقَلْبِهِ وَذَلِكَ أَدْعَفُ الْإِيمَانِ 
He said, whoever sees an evil, then let him change it with his hand, meaning if they're able. If you're not able, then let them change it with their tongue. If they're not able, then let them hate it, change it with their heart. And that is the lowest form of Iman. In the hadith, we find as well, Firiwaya, we find in a hadith of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Whoever strives against them with his hand, he's a believer. Whoever strives against them with his tongue, he's a believer. And whoever strives against them with his heart, he's a believer. After that, there's not even a mustard. There's not even a mustard grain of faith. Not even an atom of faith. Showing the importance, brothers and sisters, of what? Forbidding evil, if we have the ability to do so. If it's not in front of us, we're not talking, we don't spy on one another. We don't spy. We don't follow a person and say, where are they going? Let me follow them, write down in my book. Or you see them going in a direction, I'm going to follow them to see if they go in the bar. We don't do that stuff. Allah Azawajal, He prohibits us in the Quran from tajassus. In Surah Al-Hujarat, وَلَا تَجَسَّسُوا and do not spy upon one another. We're not spying on one another. We're not talking about spying. We're talking about when we see evil in front of us. When it is publicized. Is that clear to everyone? Because don't not let anyone say, well, everyone has sins. We know everyone has sins. But we're talking about when sin is committed in front of you and you see it. If you see it and you're able to speak concerning it, then that's obligatory upon you. And if you do not speak concerning it and you are able, then you're going to be held accountable by Allah Azza wa Jalla. Sa'ad, he said, likewise, from the harms of remaining silent about disobedience and not forbidding the evil, he said, وَمِنْهَا مَا تَقَدَّمَ أَنَّهُ يَدُلُّ عَلَى التَّهَاوَنْ بِالْمَعَاصِي He said, that which was mentioned earlier, that being silent about sins and not forbidding the evil shows that the individual takes disobedience to Allah lightly and that they could care less. Oh, it's, only, it's, not, it's not a big matter. But you know what's amazing, Ikhwan? If somebody insulted us, how do we behave? Someone be insults you, how do you behave? You, we become upset. Some of us are ready to fight. When it's personal. But what about when people, they transgress the boundaries that Allah has really set? The Prophet Sallallahu never sought revenge for himself. He got angry when people, they transgressed the boundaries of Allah Azza wa Jalla. Some of us, we only write for our own selves. What's in our interests? Whereas the Muslim, he follows the command of Allah and the command of the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. From the harms of remaining silent about evil, not forbidding the evil, وَمِنْهَا أَنَّ ذَلِكَ يُجَرِّيَ الْعُصَاتَ وَالْفَسَقَ عَلَى الْإِكْثَارِ مِنَ الْمَعَاصِي This emboldens, it makes the sinners and the disobedient brave to commit many sins. If no one says anything about it, they're going to be emboldened. Oh, okay, I'm going to continue. I'm going to go further than that. May Allah protect us from that. This emboldens the sinners and the disobedient to commit more sins if they are not deterred from them. Don't ever say, you know, they're not going to listen. You may advise them, this is evil brother, this is evil sister. Sister, use the cover, that cover of modesty. Don't lose that. Nam. Don't ever think, oh, they're not going to listen to me. They may go home and reflect and say, you know what? I'm better than this. And alhamdulillah, they start covering. But you see a brother, and he's going through a situation, you see him. You don't follow him. You bump into him, and you see him disobeying Allah Azza wa You advise him, you admonish him. You don't know how that will affect him. Maybe not at that moment, but maybe later on. Sa'di said, 
Because if, a, if the people remain silent about evil and they do not forbid it, evil will increase. And there will be great calamities as it relates to the religion and worldly calamities. And the sinners and the disobedient, they will have the upper hand and they will have the power. And you will find after that, the people of good, they will become weak and they will not be able to combat the people of evil. It's like now. <laughs> like what's happening now. If you go on social media and you see someone clearly disobeying Allah Azawajal and you say, this is haram, they're going to label you as haram police. I mentioned it before because you have a group now. I think they came out of a city in America. I'm not going to name the city because people are very touchy about those things. But they're saying marijuana is halal. You can get high because it comes from the earth. Well, so did cocaine and heroin. You're going to start injecting that in your veins? Hawa, desires. They want to get high. So they're looking for any excuse. If you go now and combat that, Allah said, the Prophet wasallam said, the Sahaba, they said, they're going to say, you're the haram police. But the person of khayri doesn't care. Because if you don't combat it, the people of wickedness and indecency and immorality, they will get the upper hand and they will start to try and intimidate and bully. But the person of haq is not intimidated, nor is he bullied. You can call us what you want. Likewise, he said the Sa'di rahimahullah, and he said if this happens, the people of good, they will not be able to change what they were once able to change. From the harms of remaining silent about evil, not forbidding the evil, and fi tark al-inkar lil munkar, yandaris al-ilm, wa yakthur al-jahl. When evil is not forbidden, knowledge will be lost, and ignorance will become prevalent. فَإِنَّ الْمَعْصِيَةِ for indeed disobedience and sins, if they are repeated, and many of the people are doing them, and nobody from the people of re religiosity, and nobody from the people of religiosity and knowledge are forbidding these things, then people will start to think that this is not disobedience. Yes, if people are doing sins, and these sins are being repeated all around us, and nobody from the people of religiosity, the people of knowledge, no one's saying anything. The ignorant person may think that this is something that's okay. It's allowed. Because if it wasn't allowed, then you would have people of knowledge that they would speak about it. He said, He said, and the ignorant person may even think that this is worship that is good. Like rapping. Somebody may say, you know, I'm going to be a rapper, but I'm going to call it a halal rapper. What's that? Just because you put halal in front of a word, you think it's okay? So it's like saying halal pork makes bacon okay? From the pig? Names don't change reality. And don't give us, you know, the scholars, they differ over music. The scholars, they differ about you talking about killing and drugs and fornication and everything else. They differ about that. Please, go back. Come to the masjid. You need to purify your soul and your brain. If anyone is saying that. He said, He said, and what evil is believing that something Allah has forbidden is lawful and the distortion of realities and seeing falsehood as truth. And again, Ikhwan, just be clear. No one from amongst us is an angel. People have shortcomings. If people have shortcomings, they repent to Allah Azawajal. Just to reiterate that point, alhamdulillah, that, as I said, no one is expecting any of us to be angels, and all of us have shortcomings. May Allah pardon us for our sins. However, we don't publicize our shortcomings for the world to see. And if we do publicize them, we cannot get angry when someone forbids them. Don't get angry when somebody advises you if you put up a post where you're disobeying Allah as you Get angry at yourself for putting up the post to begin with. No one can get angry when they publicize their disobedience to Allah and somebody advises them because that is what Allah commanded them to do. And if you are angry at them, you oppose the command of Allah Azza wa Jal, whether you like it or not, whether you recognize that or not.
So yes, if you have shortcomings, you conceal them. You repent Allah Azza wa Jal, Tabaraka wa Ta'ala. We all have to repent Allah Azza wa Jal. That's Unwan al Sa'ada. Ida Adhanab astaghfar. If a person sins, they repent. But once you publicize it, now you are publicizing it. And if people see it, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made them accountable. And if they have the ability, they must speak about it. They must forbid the evil. And brothers and sisters, we cannot be scared to forbid the evil. Regardless of what they're going to say about you. Because if they don't like you because you enjoying the good and you forbid the evil, they didn't like you to begin with. They were pretending. And if they had a genuine love for you and you advised them in the correct fashion and you enjoying the good in the correct fashion and you forbid the evil in the correct fashion, then inshallah ta'ala they will appreciate that in the long term. Bi'idhnillahi ta'ala. Closing inshallah, Imam Sa'adi said, وَمِنْهَا أَنَّ السُّكُوتِ عَلَى مَعْصِيَةِ الْعَاصِينَ وَرُبَّمَا تَزَيَّنَةِ الْمَعْصِيَةِ فِي صُدُورِ النَّاسِ he said, remaining silent, being silent about sins, the sins of the sinners, the disobedience of the disobedient, could possibly lead to sins appearing, appealing in the hearts of the people. And some people will always imitate others. People are bent on following those similar to them. And they imitate people from their kind. So yes, if everyone remains silent about evil, Maybe that disobedience, it will become something appealing to the people. Something that they're interested in. But you don't know. Maybe you talk about it. Alhamdulillah. You speak about it in whatever capacity you're able. Naam. And because you spoke about it, they recognize, you know what, that's not cool. And again, in this city, we can relate. Because people listen to music that was glorifying killing, was glorifying murder, was glorifying the taking of drugs, was glorifying khamar, was glorifying zina, and was glorifying everything that was wicked and immoral. And the conclusion is what? What we see around us. It's not rocket science. You don't have to be part of NASA to figure this out. It's obvious how we got here. And the solution is clear as well, but again, people have to make some tough decisions. He said, due to being silent, Ali Muhammad Sa'adi closed by saying, due to being silent about sin and not forbidding it, Allah mentioned that the disbelievers from the children of Is uh, Bani Israel, the children of Israel, they were cursed due to their disobedience and their transgression. And he specifically mentioned from their transgression and their disobedience, them not forbidding evil. This serious and grave crime and sin and evil. Allah specified this, showing the serious nature of this and the grave consequences if we do not forbid evil. May Allah grant us all tawfiq, all success in the dunya and the akhirah. And may Allah make us sincere advisors to one another.